welcome back. I hope you're all doing so, so well. This video I have seen on quite a few different channels. I think Susie did this, Tamara did this video, Lizzie did this video, and in honesty, I kind of put it off because when I was thinking about what I would name as my kind of worst products I dislike the most that I've ever bought, I kind of didn't think of anything straight off the top of my head. I was like, well, I kind of love everything that I have bought in the past. But actually when I got thinking about it, I was like, these shoes weren't as good, this bag wasn't my favourite. And I realised that actually I had been disappointed a little bit by some products. So I thought I'd put this video together for you. So I've got three items I really loved and three items I didn't like quite as much. So I thought we'd just have a chat about them. I'm going to start off with one of my best luxury purchases. And that would have to be the Givenchy Antigona in navy, which I've talked about so much. And yes, it really does need a clean, I'm really, really sorry. In fact, I haven't used this bag now for quite a few weeks, maybe a few months. But it still stands as like one of my favourite bags I've ever bought. And it might be because I bought this as you probably all know, I've mentioned this before, but I bought this in pink years ago, like three years ago, which obviously means that I really, really love this bag, and it's still going so strong, this style of bag, because it is just so cool, the shape, it holds so much. It's just one of the best bags I've ever bought. It's just one of those really easy, wearable bags that I could wear with absolutely anything and fit everything into it without it being too heavy. So for that reason it's definitely kind of a favourite. And the fact that it's in the textured leather means that you can't really scratch it or ruin it. So this is a bag I think I'll probably have for the rest of my life, hand it down to my daughter, if I have a daughter that is. It's just one of those really robust bags so this is definitely kind of a fave. So on the flip side of that, something I was a little bit more disappointed in, I guess would have to be these. So these are my Louboutin, I think they're the Pigalle pumps. Now these are like the 12 centimetre, like the highest that Louboutin do. And in honesty, I'm not necessarily disappointed and I'm not naming these as the worst product, I'm just kind of mentioning them to bring them to your attention. These are like the most uncomfortable shoes in the world. Like I love heels, I could walk for hours and hours in heels, like they don't bother me. These massively bother me. These are the most uncomfortable things I've ever put on my feet, ever. I bought them because they just look absolutely gorgeous and I still stand by that and I do still wear them because they're just absolutely stunning and they make a massive statement. But I can literally wear these for about an hour and a half before my feet just want to explode. I want to love these more but they're just so uncomfortable. So yeah, if you're thinking of buying some Louboutins, please be aware they're extremely uncomfortable. Not necessarily a worse product I've ever bought, but I wanted to mention it. So my next kind of best product purchase, I'm sure a lot of you are probably waiting for this, but it'd have to be my Valentino Rockstud. So looking a little bit beaten and bruised now, I'll be honest, especially seeing as I like throw them in my case now. They're still gorgeous and I still wear them to death and that's the reason I wanted to mention them because these were a purchase I put off for years because I thought they were kind of done and they were overhyped and I didn't think I really needed them until I had them in my life and now I feel like I need every single colour ever in every single shape and size. <laughs> Honestly, they're just so comfortable. If you're a heels wearer, you'll realise these are actually really, really comfortable. I could walk for so long in these without feeling like they're hurting my feet anywhere or that my feet are getting too tired. Like my feet just don't get that tired in these because of the ankle support. The fact it kind of strapped onto your ankle, I don't know, it just gives me more security and more support. And they're just so gorgeous. And in this colour especially, this is the powder colour. They will go with absolutely everything that you own. Any colour at all, powder will go with, I think. These are a very expensive shoe, they're about £730. But by far, I wear them more than any other shoe. So the cost per wear is minimum. And I love them to bits. And back to a more disappointing product. Would have to be these, actually. Prada boots. On the outset, look at them, like, I'm still totally in love with these boots, like, they're absolutely gorgeous. They're like a matte, smooth leather, and the leather goes everywhere, all the way down the heel. It's got a cute little Prada symbol in here, it's got a zip up here, and they're the kind of boots that I, in winter, or, like, autumn winter, I wear these sorts of boots, like, they're going out of fashion, and I love them to bits. However, I was a little bit disappointed with these, because... The quality just didn't really match my expectations or the price of these boots. Like these boots are around £600 and the quality of this heel is shockingly bad. I think the first day I wore them um, I got home and all the leather here on the heel 
was pushed up. Now that could have been my fault, maybe I walked onto something and it pushed it up, probably was, but then I thought, for the price, should it have been that easy to ruin? But then past that, I sent them back to Italy, they fixed them, I got them back. I then got them back and wore them once more for a day, and at the end of the day, realised that the stub, this steel bit here, had completely come out. So now I was walking on metal. So everywhere I was walking on like tiles, it's like chip, chip, chip. It just looks really, really bad. It just makes your shoes look like they're really bad quality. So again, I took them back, had them sent to Italy and got them back. And bear in mind, it takes about six weeks every time you send them back to get fixed. And they always say to you never to really send them to a bootmaker and to send them back to where you got them from just so that you don't kind of like void your policy and all that. I kind of went along with that. I was like, okay, send them back to Italy. But then I got them back again and again, I wore them for one day and this has happened again. Like that shouldn't happen to a 600 pound pair of boots. I'm not walking anywhere that where the ground is unusually hard. I'm just using them as a city boot the way they should be used. Like I went into them in Prada and said, are these meant to be for carpet only? Because otherwise this is ridiculous. But anyway, this has happened again. So in honesty, I'm gonna take them to my own boot makers and just say to them, can you put a more reinforced heel on? Because this just isn't working. So yeah, so that's the reason why I say these are one of the worst purchases. Because they're probably the purchase that has brought me the most disappointment. And then back to the positives, a product I loved to bits, so I'm so glad I bought, was my first Chanel. So I bought the Chanel Walk, the wallet and chain bag. I bought it in Paris a couple of months back, probably about four or five months ago now. It's actually so well used, it really needs a clean. I'm really bad for cleaning my bags, I'm so sorry. But it's so beautiful and a lot of people have these wallet and chains because they are kind of a small Chanel bag, they're very easy to wear, they're a little bit less expensive than like a boy bag, only a little bit though. But honestly, I'd say this is one of the best purchases I've ever made because I've worn this more than I ever thought I ever would. Because of the colour of it and the style, it goes with everything, again, like I can wear it with black, navy, white, light blue. I mean, I'd happily wear it with this, in fact, I think I have worn it with this so many times. And it does fit quite a bit in, I mean, it fits my phone, It'll fit a li liquid lipstick, a mirror, um, a key, my cards, because inside it has a card area where you can put all of your credit cards so they don't have to be kind of falling around your bag. You can put any cash in here if you want to inside the zip pocket, but quite often I like that to use for other things like keys for example. But it's just very compact and I remember thinking is this actually going to hold anything in it, but it does expand out at the side so you can kind of wear it stretched out if you need to i mean i think tomorrow would just be going oh my god why are you stretching your chanel bag but i mean you've got to make use of the bag you've just bought and that's kind of the way i use it i just kind of expand it out put what i need in it and honestly i can't tell you how much i've used this if you're thinking of buying this and you're worried that it's a bit too small and you'll not use it i guarantee you will probably use this as your most kind of date night club night going out kind of bag especially as well for like daytime and just when you're nipping out the shops it's so handy so yes this is one of my best okay and for my very final kind of disappointing product this is probably gonna be quite controversial but it's the chloe fay chloe fay mini and i mean i still love this bag i love this bag to bits and there was so much hype around these bags like they were so hard to get hold of and when i finally found it i was like oh my gosh i finally got it and i was overjoyed especially as it's a little bit less expensive than the other chloe bags it just means it was a lot more people wanting to get their hands on this the only thing that makes me feel it was a little bit disappointing is this discoloration that it's kind of formed over the chloe sign and it's probably where i probably used this area to open the bag like that but I still feel that I didn't touch it that much for it to do that and yet I kind of feel like it's a little bit discoloured around here now I don't know if you can really see it just looks a little bit discoloured and of course this is tan suede it's totally my fault I totally get it I knew it was probably gonna happen but this is still my video where I'm talking about disappointing products and for that reason I am disappointed that this happened <laughs> it's probably just sort of worn away rubbed away but I just didn't expect it to kind of look like this. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're thinking of buying the Faye, I would maybe think about going for one in full leather or going for the one in black. 
so that you don't get any kind of discoloration on it. As the tan is just a little bit more sensitive, definitely. So that's why I wanted to mention it, just in case you're thinking about this bag. It's a gorgeous little bag, I do love it, I just wish that this hadn't really happened because it kind of puts me off using it a little bit now because I feel it looks a little bit worn. And that's it, my three best and three more disappointing products. Like I don't want to be too negative and in honesty there aren't any products that I, I've ever thought oh I really wish I didn't have that or I felt like I wanted to sell it. Not yet anyway. So it's kind of hard. But I definitely say those three are the ones that disappointed me. So I really hope that helped with anything that you're thinking of buying soon. Hopefully it did. Let me know down in the comments what you think and let me know what your most disappointing product is just so I don't go and pick that up too. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a like if you did. And if you're brand new here, then just click the subscribe button below. I make two videos a week, Wednesdays and Sundays, and I'd love to have you back. So I will see you all then, I guess. Bye! Mwah.